We are very fortunate to have author, illustrator, and marketing maven Katie Davis here with us today. Welcome, Katie. Thank you so much. We, we're doing it, Carrie. <laughs> uh, I know. Uh, before we get started, I just want to tell you a little bit about how I came across this awesome person. She was first referred to me through the 2013 12 by 12 picture book experience, which is a challenge and an awesome community where writers share awesome resources. Well, there was this buzz that Katie created about an author platform, and I thought, hmm, I better get going. It was an early wake-up call for me to get my buns in gear <laughs> and do what I love most, promoting literacy to kids, writers, and teachers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, being the technophobe that I am, I challenged myself to get up uh, this great blog site going and then spread social media a little bit stronger. And then I found out that video has a wider audience. So, of course, I signed up for Katie's Video Idiot Bootcamp online course and I overcame my fear of creating video. And you did too. <laughs> <laughs> Am I better off because of it? So, you betcha. So, yeah. you betcha. And could I still learn more? Absolutely and always. So I've always got these questions swimming through my mind. You're not the only one. I mean, <laughs> yes. I just talked to a friend of mine who's a social media master, and she said she went to a social media summit, and that she listened to these people who are YouTube experts and video experts. I said, oh, tell me everything, tell me everything. She said, that is so great that you want to keep learning. I said, are you kidding? If you find an expert or a guru or anything like that who says they know everything, run in the other direction <laughs> and never listen to them because First of all, I don't understand that. There, this is a constantly changing platforms and formats and, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> and nobody can know everything. I'm learning from my students all the time. My clients will tell me, I'll say something, they'll say, but I just read, I'll say, oh, I gotta check that out. So, you know, people, it's, that's how you learn. I just, I happen to know more than most writers, more than most people, and that's, and I'm, I just learned to not be afraid. So a lot of writers are not tech, techie, and I love the tech, and I love to share the knowledge. So, um, and I'm really am passionate about helping writers, and that's why I got into this other part of the writing business in helping other writers. So it's, it's nice, yeah. it's fun. That's awesome, I, I agree. You really have mm -hmm. to experience something in order to learn it. And yeah. The only way sometimes to do it is to jump in with both feet. So <laughs> get, you gotta get over that fear and just jump in. Yes. I, I love that you have a new experience offered for other people. It's called Crank It Up, and I'd love for to, I'd love to hear more about it. Those questions that are swimming through my mind, I know they could be addressed through Crank It Up. Yes. Could you tell us more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was a really amazing thing that happened, and I I decided to start a website called courses uh, coursesforwriters.com, and in order to get people to come and check out the site, I put a free course on it called 100 Things Every Writer Must Do to Succeed Online. I have to look and see what it's called because I mess up the title all the time. <laughs> so long. So when people sign up for it, I set up an email. I sent every person an email saying, what can I do for you? What kind of courses do you want to see on here? What do you want to learn? I could not believe the response I got. I got dozens and dozens, hundreds of emails back saying, I need to learn this. I have these questions. I have these questions. And what was really interesting is that they weren't hundreds of different emails. They all came under four main categories and one kind of along the, that kind of connected them. But they were video and tech, email lists, how to create them, how to grow them, <clears throat> marketing your book and yourself, and social media, how to do it, how to, how to grow as an author. And I realized that people really, really, really needed help, and I could give that to them because I knew all those things. I've been doing it. I've been, I, I was having making money, being an author in business, and I was doing a lot of those things. I had learned on my own, and I knew how much easier it would be if somebody had just taken me by the hand and shown me all those things. I could have, oh, I could have saved years of agony. <laughs> so I figured I would create a group coaching uh, session based on those questions, and I crafted it made ba basically like a remember in college, like a 101 class where you get the basics and you learn everything. And that's what I did, taking each subject 
by the hand, giving tons of backup material and handouts and stuff like that. And that's what I did for four, four weeks. And the cool thing, which I was stunned by and hadn't planned on, is that when it was done, 27, I figured this out, and I'm not a math genius, 27.27% of the students that, or the writers that signed on for the first Crank It Up session, signed up for a kind of uh, 201 session. Oh, okay. The second, like an implementers, so where we, it's much more one-on-one -on -one and more personalized and customized, and I actually go through each person's website, we see how to, um, optimize it and make it better and set up things for them. Everything they learned in the first session, they, they go up a, a level and learn even better and we go r really dig in um, to people, in, you know, individualize much more. So it's really, it's very gratifying we, and we have a lot of fun. We really, it's just, it's so much fun, so. Great, yeah. so do you kind of let the students lead the way with their questions then or do you kind of I know you said you have four main categories that really uh, earned a response through mm -hmm. that initial email mm -hmm. and everything. Do you go with that as your guide and then take the students' questions and let that lead the way too? Or well, the yeah. first one, well, the first one was created with by the questions. All right. the questions right. that I got in the hundreds of questions were that's how I created it and that's how I formed it. The second, the second session is definitely led by each person's need and where they want to go and what they need specifically and individually. So right. that is, yes, absolutely, okay. yeah. Okay, well it seems like the biggest gem of Crank It Up is that you're overcoming that self-doubt and the myths that mm -hmm. are arming participants. Yeah. So what, I mean, sometimes those myths can kind of make them more fearful, I guess. So you're breaking down those walls mm -hmm. and is that, is that the biggest thing that you feel it, it's addressing? You know, I didn't think that that would be it, but it, I think it's, it's kind of starting to rise to the surface that that is because people are constantly commenting like, I can't believe I'm doing this. I never thought I could do this. They're in every session. I mean, before the first week was up, I was getting testimonials. And the, by the second week, I had like five people saying, oh my gosh, this is amazing. It's on the website. It's on, it's on katydavis.com slash crank it up. You can see the people are like testifying. It was so gratifying. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm making such a difference. It was so, you know, when, when you help somebody and you feel so good about that, it's really quite astounding. It really feels yeah. good. Yeah. So that, yes, I, to answer your question, I really do think it's, um, I do think that that is amazing because you know when you it's it's the whole give a give a guy a, a fish thing, <laughs> you know <laughs> give a give a person the keys to their website and um, they learn how to eat for a lifetime. <laughs> well, I can't believe it's such a gar it's such an awesome deal. Um, they're getting such personalized feedback yeah. for less than twenty five dollars an hour. So yeah, I mean, yeah. But considering I think that's unheard of. Yeah, it is unheard of. It, considering I charge over $300 an hour usually um, <laughs> and I and I get it you know I have clients so this is it what I I was thinking was I would get a lot of people at once and I could help a lot of people at once and that would be a great thing so that if they wanted to continue with me wonderful and if they wanted to go on their own that's also good but I wanted right. to be able to help a lot of people one time because a lot of writers don't make a good income and I wanted to I want to show them that they can by doing these things you don't know how many people I say you have to have an email list please just get I've you know banging my head on the wall trying to get people to have an email list and they're like yeah but I don't want to bother people that's not it and if I can just get on my soapbox for one minute whether you listen to me or listen to someone else you you have to have an email list in fact, that's the next thing I'm going to create. I'm going to create a, a, a course on how to create an, e an email list because everybody keeps asking me. Um, and it's the most important thing you can do as a writer in business because you are a business, and I, I've been saying this for years, you are a business. If you're a writer, you are like a small business person. You're, you're like your own little store. You know, and not everything in the store, not all your chores, like if you're sweeping up the aisles in the store, that might not be your favorite chore, but you still have to do it. Maybe you like talking to the customers who come into the store more, which is your writing, right? Or your illustrating. But you still have to sweep those floors. Otherwise, the customers um, aren't going to be able to open the door to come in because there's going to be too much dirt on the floor, right? I don't, how long can I go on with this analogy? <laughs> but but it, you have to do it. and. 
doing the marketing part is part of our job. Uh, whether you're independently published or traditionally published, you've got to do it. So having your email list is really important. And I was just saying this morning to some friends who have a gigantic writer's blog, they don't have an email list. And I said, they are like, we don't need to because we're never going to sell anything on our blog. I said, it doesn't, you don't need to sell anything to need an email list. What if, you're, what if your site crashes and you can't get it back up? You have no way to reach all those fans. And what if you're the next week or the next year or whatever, you have a book coming out. How are you going to reach all those people? You just had all those people, those potential book buyers and people who want to know and they want to pay you back for all the good that you've given them, all the, all the information and all that stuff. They want to reciprocate. They want to say, thank you so much for all these years of all this great information. I want to support you now that you have a book coming out and I want to buy your book and help you out. And they're not, you're not going to be able to get a hold of them. Okay, I'm get, getting off the soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> so. so I'm amazed because you wear so many hats. I mean, you're the author of picture books, middle grade novels, uh, instructional books. You are an illustrator, podcaster, a mom, a speaker, a marketing maven, and more. So how do you do all that? <laughs> um, I have a really good assistant. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I go into, uh, it, it, I think it's the good side of being ADD <laughs> um, because uh, I, I like to do a lot of different things. And I, I really do have jealousy over people who just want to focus on one thing because I think it would be um, easier in a way. But I also really like to do a lot of stuff. I mean, I just, I just enjoy it. So I, I also, I do, you know, people... It, People, the perception of me from the outside in is I'm doing all this stuff, but I haven't drawn in a while, you know. And I saw I saw somebody's sketches; they put it up. And I was like, oh man, I missed that. I got to start drawing again. And I'm having lunch with my uh, agent this week in New York, and I'm I'm having major guilt. I hope she, don't don't tell her I said that. But I'm I'm having guilt because I haven't drawn in a long time, and I'm and I haven't done art, and I have a also have a partner that I wrote a picture book with. Don't tell her either, because I was supposed to be doing the drawings. So, you know, it's um, it I, you can't do everything. It's impossible to do everything. But I and I'm well. I know your I know your next question, so I won't bring it up. I won't. Um. <laughs> well, I kind of thought of another one. <laughs> oh, go ahead. So, do you have balance tips, or is it just like you utilize some help from some other people, and it really helps you make it all? Work? Yeah. No, I there I do have balance tips. Don't kill yourself if you don't get it all done. Number one. Nobody can do it all. Yeah, you know, I can't do it all. I can I, I said to you before we started, I can't chew gum and walk at the same time. And they have <laughs> they've done studies that show that if you try to multitask, you will do nothing well. Do one thing. I do concentrate. I hyper focus on one thing and power it out. And then I will hyper focus on the next thing and power it out. Um, wow. but it so it seems like I'm doing a lot because I'm I'm hyper focusing, but mm -hmm. and I'm good at that, and that is also an ADD quality where you just get you drill down and you just hyper focus on one thing. But yeah. um, but I also love what I do, so I can do that, and it sometimes is to the detriment of some other things. But um, and I have clients, and so then I I can't concentrate on other things. I concentrate on them. So um, and they take priority. My clients right. will always you know if they're if they're employing me, you know, they're paying me money, they're going to take priority. So right. um, that's very important to, um, to, to put in my, my front view, view finder, whatever, my, in front of my face. I, don't, yeah. I never really forget, you know, I don't forget about them. I have to, in fact, make sure that I take some time off. Um, I had a friend on Friday, I was texting her about some business stuff. And it was Friday night, and she, she lives in California, and it was like 7 or 8 o'clock at night. And she said, uh, isn't it Friday night there? <laughs> and I said, okay, hint taken, I'm stopping now. And my husband was <laughs> like, I now love your friend. Because <laughs> he can't get me to stop. Yeah, I understand. I'm a workaholic. So. Yeah, but also I'm trying to make college dues, you know. I got two kids yeah. in college. That stuff is expensive. Well, one of the good things, I guess, is you can offer this to other people who are feeling really bogged down because 
you've got something new that you're offering to other people that either can't overcome their fear of making right. videos or they just don't have the time mm -hmm. to make videos and so you are now offering something else called yes i am videos for writers Yay! and guess what is, what i'm doing i'm making videos for writers it's videosforwriters.com and I couldn't believe I got that URL. Videos for writers, really? It's available? Um, <laughs> yeah, I got videosforwriters.com and I am making basically, and it seems like a really complicated thing to describe to people, but remember Mad Libs? Yes, right? I love them. Right, okay, so you get the template. You don't write your own story, right? You get a template and you have to fill in the blanks. Well, this is like Mad Libs, but with videos. So I'm starting out with book trailers and I just did one for Fancy Nancy. I interviewed Robin Price Glasser and I said, you know, and so she said, yeah, you can do one for Fancy Nancy. I was like, awesome. So I did one for Fancy Nancy and I love how it came out. And I have a whole bunch I have not released yet. I'm not ready to show the public the site yet. But what will happen is there will be three examples for each template, four templates to start with to show. There will be a blank template. Well, a template is blank. So there will be a template and then there will be, say, a picture book using that template and then there will be a completely different kind of book using that template so you can see like a novel and and maybe a really dark and grim novel and a really light little cute picture book so you can see that that template can be used by any kind of book and it will be uh, customized for you that so i will take the template and i will customize that template for you for you for your book and then there's another template and it's a, so one is called the raving reviewer and the next one's called the teachable tips and the next one's called I forget but there's four of them and um, and so um, it's it's gonna be really cool and I'm making it very affordable and uh, you know I've seen I've seen I think the lowest price I've seen for uh, somebody making book trailers for people is something like three hundred dollars and I'm gonna be doing it for less but they are templates so yeah. they are not like I had somebody hire me to try it out and like she wanted to hire me and I said no but you can be the first um, person to use the site uh, but you have to realize it's a template and it just kept it I, don't, I think it's hard for people to understand that it's a template that means there aren't you can't change the template you, you mm -hmm. fill out a form and then I fill in the blanks so right. you know you can't in like in Mad Libs you can't change the stuff that was already there and right. so that's it's it's going to be interesting to see what happens and there will be uh, like the first people who sign up I may give them a deal or I may give them a deal on the next one or something like that so if they want to sign up for the priority list um, there will be something in the beginning to, uh, to 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 reward them for being an early ad adopter I don't know what yet but they can sign up for the list and it's it's at videosforwriters.com and Great. yeah, so I got to figure out. I got to figure out what I'm gonna thank them with. But um, yeah, and I'm also going to have add-ons. Like people can. I mean, my my videos on um, YouTube are in the top 2.69 percent for views, which I didn't even know. See, that's another thing I don't know. I didn't know that. Somebody, one of my guests on my podcast, told me that. So I was like, really? So he said, yeah. So I, I put that in, and so now I know that that is a marketable thing, and so um, I'm gonna have, like, it might be $50 if somebody wants to be, put their video on, on a uh, playlist, I will do that. So, you know, things like that, little, little add-ons, and if I make it inexpensive enough, um, maybe it'll, Great. It'll fly. Is there a, a special date that they can expect to roll out or just the, the, <sighs> it is, on the list and that's the best best thing to do so you can get the updates? Yeah, yeah, they have to be on the list because it has been, I thought it was going to launch in the summer. I've been working on it for over a year and, it, you know, it it got, it's really complicated because I didn't know how I was going to show it and I also want to do it for adult writers and other people and all, you know, I could do it for small businesses too. I wouldn't have to just be for writers because it's... It's really scalable. I mean, I could do for really anyone, but I mean, my my niche is children's writers, so that's where I want to. And I want to do. I'll be doing uh, school visit and appearances uh, videos. I'll be doing welcome videos for people's sites, and all different kinds of videos. So I have to get this first. So they click on it, they fill out the form. I do the video. I create the video, and hopefully, it gets so big that I'm hiring people to help me create the videos. 
Oh, that's we'll awesome. See. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds really great for people who don't have a lot of time and uh, yeah, or really money. Don't, yeah. want to over, just can't overcome that fear. So right. um, looking forward to that. That's Thank awesome. you. Thanks, Carrie. Well, I have, to, I have to switch gears because I'd be really regretful if I didn't ask you about my passion, which is picture books. So are there any more picture books on the horizon for you? Yes, definitely. Well, first, my <clears throat> one, one, when you say on the horizon that I'm working on or that are... Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, I am working on a book, a Halloween book that's a story from my childhood. I've been working on that forever. Um, and I'm also working on the one I told you that is with a friend of mine. We wrote together. It's very cute and funny. And in fact, we wrote it. It came to us on in, when we were on Julie Headland's uh, writer's renaissance retreat in Florence, Italy. So give her a little plug on that because go, you'll get inspired and yeah. it's fantastic. Um, and um, and then uh, I also have, I thought I have a book that I've been, that's been germinating for a while that comes from something that we did with my kids when they were little. And the, it, maybe if I write it, it maybe I would get some, um, tuition money you know comes <laughs> for their <laughs> education you know <laughs> now that they are we don't do this thing with them anymore which I can't talk about because it's right you know I don't want to put it out there because it di no. it dissipates whoops it dissipates the idea you know okay but it's a really fun well, idea awesome yeah. um, how did you break into the picture book market can you tell us a little bit about that story oh yeah well it's really funny because Ever since I was 16, I was writing and illustrating little stories. And um, the first one I did, I did for this little girl, and I didn't even know it was a picture book. It was basically a, a dummy. And uh, I was just always messing around with that. And it never occurred to me that I could do it as a job. When I was growing up, authors did not go into schools and talk about how you could do that for a job. I just thought, you know, writers were this other, you know, echelon of people, or they were like old dead guys. So, um, <laughs> really, I mean, you know, they you, that it was something that lined the walls of the library. So, it was something too special. And so, uh, I grew up. I started doing other kinds of writing for my work and marketing and things like that. And so, when I finally, uh, I, I had a little collection of picture books. And when I met my husband, he had the same sort of obscure collection of picture books. And the um, one one day, and it was right before the 25th anniversary of SCVWI, he got he was working at an animation studio, and he got a flyer on his desk for the the conference. And he said, "Why don't you go to this thing?" And I he says, "You're always messing around with these picture books." And I said, "Okay, I'll, I'll do it." And I walked in there knowing nobody, not a person, not a soul. Didn't even know. I didn't know anybody. I didn't know what a dummy was. I didn't know anything. So um, that was really the beginning. And I met people, and I walked in, and I literally, I heard, oh, you know, and it, the angels singing, and walked in, <laughs> and there was like 800 people there, and I just, I feel like that place, that was it. That's where I learned that I could do, why I was on the planet. That's what I felt. Aw, yeah. that's sweet. Yeah. What did you do before that? What, what was your main dream or your uh, job before that? Oh, I never, I didn't, uh, I was, oh, well, I, I did a lot of jobs that I hated and, um, and then, and got fired a bunch of times. And then um, I started, I really was an entrepreneur for a long time. I was doing hand painted ceramics and selling them to these high end stores all around the country. And uh, the company was called Dirty Dishes. This is pre internet, pre, you, you couldn't Google it really, I don't even think. I've never done it, but maybe you can, I don't know. And then, um, and then I had, uh, I started licensing my designs. And one of the designs was called Scared Guy and got pretty big, especially in Japan. I got to go to Japan. That was pretty cool. They brought me over there, did a show, and that was very nice. And um, so that was that was what I was doing at the time. So, yeah, wow. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> what was, keeps you sane when you're on overload? What mean? What I'm sane? <laughs> <laughs> um, my husband and our dog Mango. Uh, the kids are 
gone. You know, they're at school, so I can't say that. Um, or maybe that is what keeps me sane. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding, kids. Um, you know, I, I just, uh, reading and being, you know, exercise. I, you know, I love to exercise and, you know, just seeing friends and things like that. Talking to um, friends, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It has been great having you with us today. Thank you. Um, really all on my pleasure. And uh, you've done so much to help me already. And I know that you will be helping so many more past me and beyond. So <laughs> thank you. Um, we've got some links down below our video here. And we and have prizes. We have a special deal that you want to offer too, right? A, yeah, we have prizes. We're going to... Uh, Giveaways. So I wrote a book called How to Promote Your Children's Book, Tips, t Tricks, and Secrets to Create a Bestseller. Way too long a title, but what are you going to do? It's way too long a book, frankly. <laughs> so, but um, it was number one on, oops, I got a notice. It was number one on Amazon for quite some time. So uh, it's, it's pretty good. So you'll learn a lot from it. And you can enter the raffle by uh, tweeting and Facebooking this interview and so it gives Carrie some love and mm -hmm. uh, she'll get you know we get people to come and and get onto your site that way so Great. I hope you get the word out awesome. and it'll be on for a week right? well we hope that you found some awesome new resources here and that maybe you'll win one of those awesome copies to help you promote your book or your career right thanks so much and enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.